Good morning. Welcome to the Tuesday study uh, with Pastor Alex. That's me. Uh, really excited to get together with all of you today. Um, we'll, of course, uh, give a minute or two for people to come online and start watching. Uh, we're, as always, we're encouraging people to like and share these videos. Uh, that way more people can see. Maybe people who have gotten disconnected from the normal study groups or sh whatever it is, uh, that they have something in the week uh, to minister to them. So again, I just encourage you to do that as we're waiting for for people to come online and uh, kind of uh, tune in and watch this. Go ahead and say hello in the comments. And today, if you read the description of the video, I'm actually encouraging you uh, to share your unpopular opinion. Hopefully not too controversial. We're going to try to try to avoid the real controversial ones uh, because I don't want that to be the discussion we're having today. Uh, but I just want uh, us to maybe share in the comments some of our unpopular uh, opinions. Uh, my wife says mayonnaise is disgusting as an example. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know if that's unpopular. I think that might actually be a, a popular. A lot of people like it, but I think that's actually a, a popular opinion. Uh, so anyhow, we'll uh, just keep waiting a couple minutes. Uh, if you want to grab your Bible, we are going to be working out of the largest chapter in the Bible today. We're going to be working out of Psalm 119. Uh, we're not doing the whole chapter clearly. Last week we did a short chapter. This week we're doing the the, the longest chapter, but, but only a small portion of it. Uh, so we'll keep waiting again. Uh, say hello if you're here. Like, share, and uh, share your unpopular opinion in the comments. I actually have seen recently, I, it, it was several years ago that everyone's sharing their unpopular opinion online. That was sort of the thing to do. And uh, for some reason it's coming back. I guess the quarantine, people are digging up things and so I actually just saw it coming back and I thought well this is great because I was already thinking about talking about unpopular opinions uh, so go ahead and share your unpopular opinions of course I'll have uh, some some good examples uh, good morning Jeff good morning Judy thanks for for joining us today we'll go ahead and start in about 30 seconds here I like to give about three minutes uh, for people to to get on and, and watch but uh, good morning, everyone. We got a few people watching. Awesome. Uh, it's just awesome to gather together in such a strange way. This is still gathering together and getting into God's Word together. And uh, I got a real short thing for you guys today. And I, I think it's going to be an encouragement and also a shift in the way uh, we're thinking. Jesse, good morning. Evening? Uh, I'm not even sure <laughs> what time it is for you, uh, but welcome, Amy. Awesome uh, for joining us this morning. Uh, this morning, again, we're going to Psalm 119. We're going to go ahead and turn there. But I was asking uh, for for unpopular opinions. What's one of the unpopular opinions you have? Not too controversial. We don't want to make that uh, the topic of discussion today. Uh, but if you want to share that in the comments, I, I actually gathered a few that I've seen. And we're going to move kind of from uh, the simple unpopular opinion to uh, maybe a little more serious. And so these are some of the examples I found. Um, music is a waste of time. Uh, that's an unpopular opinion. And uh, the person who said that and was sharing that wasn't saying they didn't like music, but uh, that you, your time would be better spent uh, listening to a podcast or maybe watching a, a Tuesday morning study rather than listening to music. And I, I think music has its place, so I don't fully agree, but that's an unpopular opinion. Uh, here's another unpopular opinion. Uh, chocolate ice cream is disgusting. Uh, that someone shared that. Here's one. Uh, pickle juice is delicious and healthy for your body. It's a, it's a, that's a hard one to swallow. Um, here's one. It's okay to fart in front of your significant other. Uh, we can get a variety of opinions <laughs> on that one. But those are lighthearted. Like, those aren't... Un, uh, really controversial ones, but they move into more controversial ones. Uh, con controversial opinions that could be unpopular depending on who you're hanging out with, like the opinion of there's only two genders. Um, the smartphone, which most of you have. Uh, the smartphone is the most 
dangerous device you will ever touch. That's an unpopular opinion. Um, people believe too much in freedom. Uh, that uh, certainly would be an unpopular opinion. And then there's the opinion that we're going to touch on kind of today, which is basically it, it is good to be afflicted. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in and see what that's all about. What is this unpopular opinion we find in the Bible in Psalm chapter 119? We're going to start in verse 65 if you've already turned there. Um, I'd love to see some of the unpopular opinions you guys have. Uh, so if you, you could still plug it into the comments as you go along. But Psalm 119, starting in verse 65, we're going to read through it, and then we're going to take it verse by verse really quickly just to break down what's going on here. Uh, so starting in verse 65. You have dealt with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The insolent smear me with lies, but with my whole heart I keep your precepts. Their heart is unfeeling like fat, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Amen. Amen. Uh, so this is Psalm 119. Uh, we we think this was probably written by King David, but we're not we're not really sure who was the author of Psalm 119. If you thought all the Psalms were by David, uh, that's not true. Some were not written by David, um, but so we're not exactly sure who wrote this. Um, but it's some good wisdom, good things to chew on. So let's break this down verse by verse, starting in 65. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull a word from each verse, basically, and just talk about what it means. So what is a verse actually saying when it, when it uses that word? And so the, uh, verse 65, uh, you have dealt with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. So word is, is kind of the word we're going to break down in that and the word in that sense, it means what comes from the mouth of God, what, what comes from God and comes to us. So it's not just God speaking in void, but what is God speaking to us? That is the word. So uh, you have dealt with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. What God has said, that's what God has done. Uh, it's kind of, it sounds like a nice statement. We'll see how it shapes up as, as the verse uh, passage continues. Uh, the next verse, teach me good judgment and knowledge. For I believe in your commandments. And we're going to take commandments. It's almost always the last word here of each verse. Uh, commandments is an indication of authority uh, of the one commanding. In other words, someone who has the authority, the power, the right to give orders to command others, uh, certainly with the expectation that there will be a response of obedience. And so the word command, I think sometimes we talk about the Ten Commandments and and it just becomes this set of rules. Uh, rules doesn't convey the same idea as commandment. Uh, commandment carries the weight of, of the authority of the one giving the command behind it. Uh, the next verse. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Uh, again, uh, there's kind of this word is coming into play, but I, the the verse itself says, you know, now I listen to what you say. So so when there was an affliction, essentially there was wandering or there was listening to other voices. But when affliction came, when hardship came, then the author here started listening to the right voice, started keeping God's word, listening to God's voice, what God said. Uh, next verse. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. Uh, statutes, again, uh, it brings up an idea in Hebrew. It's actually the, the root of the word is, is used of like etching or engraving like in stone or, or something like that. And so it's kind of this idea. A statute is this unchangeable uh, desire, unshakable desire or command or teaching of God. And so certainly something that is that locked in, that firm, you know, etched, engraved, uh, not changing. Those are the things we want to learn. Teach me those, certainly. Uh, the next verse, the insolent smear me with lies, but with my whole heart I keep your precepts. Now precepts, I say we're just breaking down word by word. Precepts 
um, tend to be, it's a word that kind of conveys the desires of like a governor or of an overseer or like a project. And so we're talking about like detailed oriented sort of uh, a precept is really getting into the nitty gritty. We're not just thinking big picture. We're not just thinking statutes. We're thinking like a little detail every part of my life. You know, I want to keep your precepts with my whole heart. The author here is talking about, and then he goes in to talk about the, these other people. And what he says of, of, of the these other people, you know, the, the insolent smear me with lies, you know, he's getting torn down. And then in the next verse, the really interesting phrase, which you probably caught as we read through, if you haven't read Psalm 119 recently, uh, their heart is unfeeling like fat. Now, depending on what uh, translation you're using, it could say, uh, I think there's, the King James might say fat like grease. Um, there's a lot of unfeeling like fat. Um, words like that, essentially, it is literally bringing up this image of, of fat. One of the things we know about fat is that, like, there's no nerves in it. Um, if someone was going to jam a needle into you, a thick needle, and you had a choice, it'll go into the fat or into muscle tissue. Uh, you choose fat every time because that's going to be much less painful, do, do a lot less damage. Like, it's just unfeeling. Like, it's just... It's something that's there, and, and that's kind of the sense uh, um, that's being brought here. Of course, they, the author wouldn't have been thinking of it in a scientific sense of, of nerves, uh, but they would understand that the fat is just this extra uh, that doesn't contribute necessarily to life. Like the fat could be removed. Um, and so the heart being unfeeling like fat, it gives this idea that there's no sensitivity, uh, no openness, no feeling, no response to the law. But I, and the verse continues, delight in the law. I delight in your law. The word for law is, uh, is kind of like the Torah here. Uh, that's usually when the word law comes up, it's some variation on that, which is a very familiar word because that's the word used for the first five books of the Old Testament. And it really means to teach. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily mean law. Like the idea behind it is is teaching. So the law is not the static thing that's just there and meant to be there. It's actually meant to be this teaching. The law is a teaching, and in it we see all these statutes and precepts. And rather than having an unfeeling heart like fat, <laughs> uh, the author here says, "I delight in your law. I delight in your teaching." And then, and then we come to the unpopular opinion in this passage, where it says, It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. So this is unpopular opinion number one that we run into in this passage, that affliction is good. And of course the reasoning here is that affliction drives us to learn God's statutes more, that affliction uh, focuses our attention uh, on things. I, I think the nature of affliction, uh, whether that's you know persecution or you know a coronavirus or whatever it is, it's it's an insecure, unstable, uncertain time when we're suffering affliction, and so it's a time for us to look for something that is certain, that is stable, that is secure. And so it is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes, that the author here is using the time of affliction that's in his life to turn and focus on these unchangeable truths about God and what God desires, what God wants. He's looking at the statutes of God during the time of opinion. And when you put it this way, affliction is good, that the outcome of affliction is not suffering, which we, we certainly there is suffering and affliction, but the outcome, the, the best outcome of affliction is that we're drawing closer to God and learning God's heart better. And then the, the last verse we're, we're looking at today, the law of your mouth is better to me, that's the teaching basically, of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Uh, for our time, I think this is unpopular opinion number two, certainly in this passage. Uh, just this idea that I'd much rather have better understanding of all God's word, all God's law, God's plans, God's desires for me than to have money. Uh, that I would rather have God's law 
than a stable economy. I'd rather have God's law than financial security. I would rather have God's law. And with this coronavirus going around, I mean, it is uncertain times. And looking ahead, there's certainly the potential for uh, the economic hardship, I guess, has already actually hit for, for many, many people. Um, and yet, is that where our hope is? Is that where our security is? Is that is that our desire in this moment? Is our desire for financial security greater than our desire for the law that comes from God's mouth? And so this is kind of an unpopular opinion. It's true, though. Like, this should be our desire, that we would desire God more than any of those things. And so this is my encouragement for you today. I said it was going to be short, and I'm going to try to bring it bring it back. That we cannot, because of any current affliction or potential insecurity or current insecurity, lose sight of what is good and what is better. That it's good that we're going through this time because it should drive us to God. And it's better for us to be listening to what God's saying than looking for where uh, money is going to come from, where is the economy going, where where is this going to end. That is the better thing. And the reality is we can all have uh, opinions. They can be unpopular opinions, they can be popular opinions, uh, but there are statutes that are right, that are unshakable, unchanging uh, God statutes. And those are things that we really need to lean on and pursue during this time, and there's truth there. Now, when we lean on those and, and trust in those, like they're not going to be shaken. Whether this coronavirus thing goes on for months, uh, or if it mercifully ends in, in weeks, um, these things don't change. And our heart for God doesn't have to be affected by any of these things. So that's my encouragement. Also my challenge, uh, unpopular opinions from the middle of uh, Psalm 119 this morning. I, again, I encourage you to like and share this video, or maybe there's someone you think uh, they need to hear this word. You can share this video directly to your page. And if you've ever had trouble seeing when we go live with stuff, make sure you like the Risen Church Facebook page. Um, usually that means you'll automatically follow. Uh, if you already like the page, but you don't seem to see when we post stuff, uh, you need to go and click. You'll see like, there's like the three little I don't know, gray dots, usually to the right of, you know, like the profile picture and name of, of whoever, in this case, Risen Church. If you click on that, it usually pulls down a drop down menu and you can choose to follow Risen Church. That way you get updates as soon as we go live or post something. Look, I'm encouraged to be uh, online with you and I'm encouraged to see some of the interactions that are going on throughout the week. Don't forget, we got a study tomorrow evening with Pastor Jeff at 6.30 and if you got kids, Thursday at 10 a.m., story time with Dina. Uh, we're just going to keep rolling stuff out and doing things to connect with you and, and connect you one to two. Uh, to another. So I love you guys. I pray that God keeps you safe and healthy, but most of all, I pray that you have boldness and that you are willing to lean into God's word, into his law, learn more about him during this difficult time. Let me pray for us real quick. Father, I just come before you and I lift before uh, you each individual who's joining in, watching this video, and also uh, all those in our churches, Lord, that they will look to you more with their lives during this time of, of trial, uh, of uncertainty, Lord, that we remember that you are certain, that you are sovereign and in control over every situation. There is no uh, economic situation and there is no uh, virus that is not under your hand, that is not under your control, Lord. And so we just pray that you use this time to mold us, shape us uh, into the people that will best be your hands and feet and share your gospel and your light in this dark world. Father, we love you and we pray these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Again, I hope to see you online tomorrow evening with Pastor Jeff. Bye.